Blessed Stanley Rother, an Oklahoma farm boy, lived an ordinary life, but as a missionary priest in Guatemala, he died a martyr fighting for his parishioners and the Catholic Church in the midst of a civil war. His courageous story resonated with students at St. Mary's High School in Westfield and inspired them to name their chapel in his honor. Steve Kiltonic attended the dedication and explains now why this common man is already on the path to sainthood. On February 1st, after two postponements earlier in the week due to snow and sub-zero temperatures, St. Mary's High School dedicated its new chapel to Blessed Stanley Rother, who was the first U.S.-born priest and martyr to be beatified. The dedication activities began that morning at an 8.30 Mass, in which the entire St. Mary's Parish School attended. Father Matthew Alcombright explained to the students the humble beginnings of Stanley Rother, most of whom were hearing about this courageous man for the first time. Stanley Rother was born on March 27, 1935 in Oak Oklahoma, a small farming community not far from Oklahoma City. His parents, Franz and Gertrude Rother, were of German descent. For Stanley and his three siblings, their lives centered on three things, faith, family, and farming. In high school, Stanley played basketball, was involved in drama, and his senior year was elected president of the Future Farmers of America. After graduation, everyone expected him to continue farming as a vocation, but he had other plans to become a priest. During the five years he spent at St. John's Seminary, Stanley struggled in academics, especially Latin. After he flunked his first year of theology, Stanley was sent home. But his strong desire to become a priest never left him, and with help from the Oklahoma bishop, Stanley entered Mount St. Mary's Seminary. He completed his studies and was ordained a priest in 1963. After five years serving as a priest in Oklahoma, Father Rother volunteered for the diocesan mission in Santiago Atitla in Guatemala. He fell in love with the land of earthquakes and volcanoes, but especially the Teotijo Mayan people. Father Rother became fluent in Spanish and the difficult Teotijo language. A missionary priest for 13 years, Father Rother became known as Padre Francisco after his baptismal name of Francis. His love of farming and the land connected him to the parishioners, who were of extreme poverty. In addition to his pastoral duties of ministering to baptisms, marriages, and first communions, Father Rother fixed tractors, plowed the land, established a farmer's co-op, and built a school, hospital clinic, parish hall, and the Catholic radio station. During the 1970s, political turmoil and violence in Guatemala escalated, especially against the Catholic Church. Disappearances became a part of daily life as a paramilitary death list surfaced. In January 1981, Father Rother went back to the United States after receiving imminent death threats. However, he returned to Guatemala three months later saying, the shepherd cannot run at the first sign of danger. On July 12, 1981, three masked men broke into the parish rectory and after a struggle, executed Father Rother, who died serving the people he loved. Father Stanley Rother's body was returned to Oklahoma for burial. His heart, however, was interred at his Guatemalan church at the request of parishioners. A cause for Father Rother's canonization was opened in 2007. In 2016, Pope Francis declared that Father Rother was killed in odium fidel, in hatred of faith, making him the first martyr born in the U.S. In September 2017, he was beatified at a rite of beatification ceremony in Oklahoma City. Father Alcombright felt St. Mary should have a place at the school where students could go during the day to reflect and pray. I think it's so important with, with Catholic education specifically, we have an opportunity to have our Lord present in the Eucharist, a place for prayer, a place for where students can go just to, to be quiet with God, to listen to His voice. And so I thought it was, it was crucial that we put a chapel back in the school. The school already had a small room which previously served as an office, storage area, and makeshift chapel for a couple of years. Over time, it just needed updating. It needed um, just a new look. Um, and it needed an opportunity for students to be more aware that it exists. Father Matt challenged students to choose a patron for the chapel. It's their chapel, so they should be able to, to pick the patron they want, the patron that speaks to them in and, and a, and a life that, that is encouraging and, you know, and influential to them. Students researched saints and others to come up with an appropriate individual. From a list of 24 names, 
four finalists were chosen. St. Pope John Paul II, Mother Teresa, Blessed Pierre Giorgio Frassati, and Blessed Stanley Rother. In the end, Blessed Rother received the most votes from the student body. I liked how he went back to Guatemala. He would not abandon his people. And also, he was a farm boy like myself. So I, I just kind of connected to him a little bit. His never-ending faith, he would, he would not back down to uh, oppression, and especially in today's world where you gotta, you gotta keep your fortitude. I think that the most important part is that we have someone who's just like us, who's very common, who most people don't know about. After listening and learning about his story, it kind of inspired me to be more like courageous and have that faith and have God back me up. One of the things that we talked about with the students a lot was his talents. He was a talented farmer. He was a talented outdoorsman. And he used that in his ministry. So he took what he was naturally good at, what he naturally loved, and he made it a part of his life. He was able to see that God was calling him to something more than what he imagined for himself. That's a great lesson for students who are at a point in their lives where they're looking forward to what they might be doing in the future. I think the most, the, the most inspirational thing is, and I think you know, all the other students have said it, he's an ordinary person. He followed a path of virtue, he followed the path of the gospel and, and wasn't afraid. As we have you know, on our sign here, um, you know, his great quote, I give my life for my people, I am not scared. The chapel is located near the main entrance, so anyone entering the school would see or pass by it. We wanted it to be in a place that was visible so that uh, people would be aware that we had done this project and that the Eucharist really forms the heart of our community. According to Father Matt, the room received a complete makeover, inside and out. We really cleaned this whole area up. We painted the walls and uh, painted the room over. We did, we rewired electrical so there's not electrical sockets in the walls. And the tabernacle, we found it was a re, you know just a tabernacle that hadn't been used and our sacristans like buffed it up with you know uh, cleaners and stuff like that to make it really look nice we acquired the icon of Stanley Rother and next to the icon is the relic of Stanley Rother that's a first class relic so it's a it's a piece of bone from his body on the other side of the chapel we have the image of our lady of the rosary uh, she's one of the great marian devotions of the people of Guatemala and then of course most importantly we have the blessed sacrament there right in the center uh, you know the tabernacle with the the beautiful crucifix above it the chapel altar was already in place. Panel doors were added for privacy. LePage wrote Blessed Rother's biography, which appears on the outside walls of the chapel, and selected the pictures that tell his life story. Blessed Rother's younger sister, Sister Marita Rother, also entered religious life. She belongs to the Adorers of the Blood of Christ congregation in Kansas. Father Matt emailed her community, informing her of the chapel and explaining some of the history of Westfield and St. Mary's. Sister Marita called Father Matt a few days after Thanksgiving. She's so gentle, she's sweet, and she was really, really, you know, very emotional on the phone. She was very honored that the students would, would pick her brother, you know, because he's, he's brand new. There's not a lot of uh, things dedicated to him at this point. Sister Marita wrote a letter to the students, which is displayed in a frame outside the chapel. She didn't write to you know the faculty or to me uh, or to the community you know the broader community of Westfield she wrote to the students because this is their chapel and they were the ones who selected her brother. After the mass the dedication continued as students walked over to the high school and assembled in the school gymnasium. Father Matt read the letter from Sister Marita. My brother Thomas Rother and I, Sister Marita Rother, are honored, we're grateful and we're appreciative that you have selected Blessed Stanley Rother, our older brother, to be the patron of the new chapel in your school. Father Matt led the students in prayer for the cause of the canonization of Blessed Stanley Rother. A prayer of dedication was recited before blessing the chapel. Blessed Stanley's next step is sainthood. For this to happen, a miracle is required through his intercession, which must take place after the day of beatification. Until then, may Blessed Stanley Rother continue to shine a light for our youth, an ordinary person who wasn't afraid to live an extraordinary life. For Real to Real, I'm Steve Kiltonic. To honor its native son, the Archdiocese of Oklahoma plans to construct a $39 million Blessed Stanley Rother Shrine that will serve as his final resting place. Once built, the 6,000 square foot shrine complex will include a 2,000 seat church, a chapel, classrooms, indoor and outdoor ministry facilities, as well as a museum. That should be pretty impressive.